Hi everybody. Well, as you can see here, this is where I store my fabric and I store it there, there and there and I've got boxes. I'll turn it around to show you. After having got that fabric, I've been running short of space and I've got my fabric in, in piles there, there, got it here, got it in a box. Oh, if I can tilt that down there, a box there, box there. I've had that out, so I'll push that back in. Um, and then a box at the top, a box there, three, two boxes there. So um, this one here, what I've, what, what I've been finding is I've got a lot of space here, the way that I've folded it. So I decided that I might fold them differently and make them so that they almost fit the whole of the shelf. And I get more on there. That when I was, did this like that, that was about halfway up. It was about there. So this has dropped by doing it full width. And what I'm using is, I'm using a piece of cardboard, which is the size of this, if I move back, and I put that like that so you can see, perhaps you can see that, no, I'll put it there, so you can see. I'm using a piece of cardboard that is about the size of the shelf. It goes back, to about there to where these fabrics are and I'm using that to fold up with so I'll let you see what I do well it might help if you can get rid of your ladies that keep this one is probably an easy one to do because it's a cotton and it's uh, it should fold neatly it's some cotton that I well I think it's a, it's a polyester cotton that I bought a long time ago I can't even remember I think I bought it for lining for a coat and never got around to using it. Don't know what I'll do with it anyway. Basically with this one, this is gonna be an easy one to do. I'll, I'll take take it and put a peg on there, like that on one side, and then I shall go round like that, round the other side. So basically I'm just going round this piece of cardboard and getting it all the way round like that. Now you can see there, that's what it's gonna look, look like at the back. I shall hold it, what I will do is put it down and fold it like that, right? I'm gonna be doing it here because it's gonna show you. Take the peg out, then slide the cardboard out. Now I'll do this on the, on the bench here because it'll be... I've got the card in there and I'll slide that out without it all coming to pieces then put that on top and then fold this over the cardboard like that and make sure it's all neatly in place I could actually do it like that and then slide the card out of there now I've got it nice and folded and that can go onto my shelf. So you can see that this is nicely folded all on top of each other. I can see it better and I'm going to get more fabrics on there. I've got quite a lot of space there 
this actually filled it all up this was like this it filled it all up and it was all different widths but this is really nice because it's showing all the fabrics all the different colors the stripes that stripey another stripey this is my uh, lorexy type stuff cotton cotton and cotton so that has made a big difference by making it all the same size as the box and uh, I can get more on. Hi everybody, it's Saturday the 3rd of October and it has been one of the dis most dismal days that we've had in months, I would say in months, definitely in months got up and it was dark all day it's been dark and it's been raining all day pretty miserable so I <laughs> I have spent the whole afternoon ironing now I love ironing I really do love ironing but normally in the back there I have a tumble dryer and I also hang clothes outside to dry in the fresh air but I was looking across at my neighbours across the road and I saw that both ladies have a clothes uh, thing up in their bedrooms and they go and hang their clothes up there to dry. And I said to his lordship, I said, I think I might do that. I might start having my clothes drying upstairs. And then when I iron them, because if I iron them here, they, go, they get ironed and then they get put into a big bag and by the time I've loved that I, I, I carried in the house and put it at the bottom of the stairs and his lordship goes up and down a few times passing it most of the time i have to say most of the time he will on one occasion pick it up and take it upstairs for me but on the rare occasions i he will will we'll be going to bed and i'll go i'll just carry this bag up the stairs because you have you've gone past it so many times and you still haven't picked it up and then by the time i've got up the stairs because he's locking doors he'll say i don't know why you didn't leave that there i would have taken it up and i'm going yes but you could have taken it up as many times as you've been up and down <laughs> So anyway, so the point of this conversation is that I bought a, one of these folding, opening out clothes horses. I left the one that I have downstairs outside in, in my garden for to dry. But I thought I'll have one upstairs and I got one of these that comes out like that. And you hang all your clothes on. And I figured that like that I could, because they were up there and they were drying, then I could have my ironing board there and in my iron and I could iron them up there and then they could go straight into the wardrobes or into the drawers well the thing is when you're our age and you've got stairs not I had I was going up and down the stairs quite a lot but you go downstairs you have your breakfast you do you potter around do this that and the other and you sometimes go up back up to the bedroom but quite often you, you tend to be downstairs and it's not until you go back up to the bedroom at bedtime you go oh, i should have got that ironing done and i've forgotten to do it so this has gone on for i would say when did i get i think it was about august that i bought this it's now the beginning of october as i've just said so three months i have had clothes piling up and piling up and piling up and up in the bedroom and today i said to his lordship i said i am going to do it every morning i've been getting them and say oh, i've got to get this this ironing done i've got to get this ironing done it's getting higher and higher and higher so in the end i said i said today i said this afternoon i'm going to do the ironing and i did i went upstairs and i did the ironing and i said to him i said i bet you can't believe this is the first time you draw for three months that your drawers have seen so many t-shirts i must have ironed about 30 t-shirts for him and um plus all the other things shirts and and, and other things but um anyway we have got them all ironed they are all put away in the drawers the washing and ironing is all done and um i'm i'm back to normal the only thing is that by taking my ironing board upstairs i found it very awkward for down here because i use an iron down here so i had an ironing station here i use this and i've made this has been going for a long time i still haven't sewn the top of it but basically it was just i made it when i first started and it's just a piece of cardboard that's folded in half i don't know if you can see that there 
piece of cardboard that's folded in half and then I wrapped wadding around it and I made a pillowcase type of cover for it and I, with the intention of sewing this up by hand and I still haven't done that. So that has been my ironing board for a long time but as you can see it's starting to get, it's warping a bit. So I wondered what I should do and so I went and bought an ironing board and I'll show you it, it's hanging on the wall there. Can you see it? It's one of these wall hanging ones and I like this because it's got legs that I can pull out and I can put it onto here. I'll put that there. I can put it onto there and I can iron with it. So I had to buy an iron to go with it. And so the iron I bought was, it's a natural travel iron. It's a Russell Hobbs steam. So I bought the iron to go with it. So then I saw something else and I thought that's a good idea. And I've never had one of these before and I like it. And that is one of these. This is by Prim and it's a silicone iron, iron cover. So I can put that on there when I'm ironing and I can iron on there. And um, it's really good because it doesn't, it, I thought it would melt with the heat, but it doesn't. It doesn't melt with the heat. So I've got the iron, the ironing board. And the nice thing about it is I can just put it all away. That's in there. This hook hangs on a hook here. And this one, when it's done, hangs on a hook there. And then I'm back to normal. I still like to have a proper ironing board and I'm not sure I might spend a lot of time ironing up there in the winter but whether I line up there in the summer or in the spring I don't know so I think that ironing board and that iron that's upstairs might have to come downstairs again towards springtime. So that's my ironing situation. Um, I still busy i've still got a lot of tidying up to do here my desk is absolutely uh covered do you remember i got the mask fabric well i made some masks the first one i made with the full length of this this elastic and i found that it was far too long and i had to cut it but basically that's the first one then this one And I'm not bending the tie yet because I, I don't want to keep bending it. And I put a little dart in there. And this is the third one. So I'm liking those. And um, the other thing I said in my last video, it was meant to be a five, a one of those take fives. I started off as take five, but I, I was so... I was trying to it was taking so long to do I thought oh I'm gonna have to cut this down it's gonna be just two things so the last one was just two things and in it I um it's the one where I bought these masks and I made them and I was telling you that I'm going away so tomorrow morning we are going to be heading down for to a holiday cottage to a place that I've never been to since I was about eight or nine years old. And I'll tell you the story about this. I have been doing my family tree on my mother's side. My father is French. I've done a bit of a family tree on the French side, but I was doing the mother's side. And my mother comes from Newcastle. Great place. Love Newcastle. Newcastle United. Everything about Newcastle I like. But having been in this area which is south of Newcastle you you get to know that there's one place that the people in the north of of the town don't like and that's Sunderland and um so Sunderland is one place there's nothing wrong with Sunderland but it's a bit like when you've got um when you've got football teams or whatever one against the other well Newcastle is the one that I used to support Sunderland was was not was was generally the people who, who were south of the time would support Sunderland people north of the time would support Newcastle so Sunderland always had a bad name to the people up north and I always thought oh I don't like Sunderland so what do I find I find that on my mother's side my grandmother was her parents one came from Sunderland 
and then they moved to Durham and I'm thinking oh golly the one place I'm not really keen on and they've come from Sunderland then the other place in England that I'm not keen on is the, the place we're going to go to tomorrow and that is Norfolk so would you believe my my astonishment when I trace my father my mother's my grandmother's husband's or rather my grandfather is it my grandfather yes my grandfather but he died at a young age my grandfather's roots and where does he come from Norfolk and I don't like Norfolk and the reason why I don't like Norfolk or in my head I don't like Norfolk is because it's totally flat there is not a piece of not a hill there's nothing you know just totally flat but um we were going to go to initially we were going to go to dorset which is on the south coast and then john we're going with john and barbara and with liz i think i've already told you that but barbara kept saying do you not fancy going to norfolk and brian his lordship didn't want to go and he said no i don't really fancy norfolk it's flat there's nothing to see so um she was going to a to, to a one of her sister's birthday parties a few weeks back and she messaged us to say that her sister had been to this part of Norfolk and she said it was wonderful. So with that in his head, we look, she, and she referenced some places to go to and we had a look at it and I said, oh, that's quite a nice place, it's quite nice. And then, as luck would have it, the following week after this message, my son and his family went to the same place, or not exactly, they were 18 miles away from where we're going. And he he kept sending pictures back and he said, Mum, this is a wonderful, wonderful place. So that made us fancy going even more. And then the other day, one of his Lordship's customers, a lady rang up and she was chatting to us and seeing how we are and uh, placing a little order. And she said, uh, in conversation, he said, we're going to Norfolk. And she said, oh, it's wonderful there. And so she's been pinging messages left right and center telling us where to go what to see you what you, sh you should go and see this you should go and do that you should try and eat there but if you go and eat there you're gonna have to book early because it's so popular it'll get booked up so it got to the stage where he's actually fancying on going and so am i and it's going to be a little fishing call a fisherman's cottage and it's in a place called wells by the sea which is uh oh by the sea <laughs> And when I was talking to my son this morning, he says, oh, mum, he says, you'll enjoy yourself. But he says, when you get to past King's Lynn, he says, it's hellish. And I said, what do you mean? He says, oh, mum, he says, it's single file traffic all the way. He says, you get stuck behind a tractor and you're going at 10 mile an hour for the rest of, rest of the journey. And he said, there's no big roads in Norfolk. It's all little, little roads. So he says, you can't overtake. So we're looking forward to going. Uh, it is going to take, apparently as long to get there as it would be to go and see my daughter who lives quite a lot further away so i think it it's quite quick to get to one point and then when you get to the other from there to the destination you're going on a very slow route to get there so i'm looking forward to going and uh, if you want me to i know a lot of you like me doing filming i shall film a bit of where we've gone to and let you see what it's like and i'm quite keen to go because obviously now i know it's where it's my grandfather's uh where he was born it'd be nice to see something of the area where he lived uh and i'm seeing it with an older person's eyes from being eight when i was eight I try to answer everybody's messages that I am starting to get quite a lot so it's proving a little bit difficult sometimes but I, I'm trying to answer them but on the odd occasion I keep a hold of a one that somebody has sent me because uh, I feel that it's a comment that I'd like to give to everybody so let me get to the first one if I can find where it is oh yeah and I, I thank you a lot of you who watched our trip to uh, Ulton Hall you, you said you enjoyed it and a lot of you said you loved the music I try to find nice music when I'm doing my vlogs because sometimes even if you're not really paying attention and you're doing some sewing or whatever then it's nice for you to have some some music to listen to so I try my best to get something that you really like to listen to Frog Zone um, she was referring to a top that I think it was my 
um, it was a top that I'd had that I'd dyed purple and he or she said please can you show a swatch of the original colour of the fabric so there's a before and after when you dye it. Yes, a, a, a top that I made in that fabric and that's the before colour and here is a top that I made in that fabric that's the after colour. The two tops are two different uh, styles though. The first one, the green one, was it was intended to be a different pattern. I've told you about this. I um, cut the pattern out, and then I forgot. I forgot to. I forgot to bring the instructions with me in here, and I couldn't be bothered to go back and get them. So I just started making it the way that I thought it was that I was making it. And of course, somehow or other, between there and here, I was the the pattern that I was thinking of in there that it should have been was not the pattern that was in here when I was working on it here so I ended up with a completely different top um so yes that's the difference there now who else Angela said I Angela 10226 said I had to laugh because you've shown in so many of your videos the abundance of pins that you have but I saw you use sewing machine needles this was very cute now it wasn't sewing machine needles Angela what it was <laughs> again sheer laziness as you get older you can't be bothered to do things and um it was i have you've all probably seen i have my lovely little wrist flower that i wear when i'm sewing and i always wear that but i do you know i can't find where it is at the moment is it over this side no it must be in the other room i usually have this on my hand and this is this is my favorite I, I never ever had one of these in days gone by but i so love it now I, whenever i saw i like to have that on my wrist but for some reason it wasn't here it was in it must have been in the other room or in in the dining room and so i didn't have any pins and i needed some to find some quickly so i then looked across into my drawers and I came across these little pins and these are the old kind of pins that we used to have in days gone by and if you can see that a little bit on the end and they're very short they're only these ones are only that size and the ones that I have with the beads on are this size let me put those between my finger and my thumb so it's just a short one so I was using this what was I using it for? I can't remember what it oh, was. Oh, when I was doing the uh, the scissors thing. When I was doing this. It was when I was making this. The, the uh, scissors or makeup hanging th thing. Uh, what do you call it? Hanging pouch? Makeup pouch, scissors pouch, hanging pouch. And I was using little pins. And it was simply because I was too darn lazy to go and get the the other the other pin thing so yes they're the old-fashioned ones the kind of things i think these are actually ones that i had when i first started sewing so it just shows you how tiny they were how how much time these are only what two and a half centimeters long and the ones with the beads are three and a half centimeters long so i find the ones with the beads are much easier to manipulate so yes that's why i had those then the next person was um you got me in stitches hi anna anna's in now i always get wrong are you new zealand or are you australia i think you're new zealand please forgive me if you're not um anna said hi good catching up with you the river tees is in the movie 1917 they wanted to find a river that was when wild waters met calm so if you've seen that film the river scene was filmed on the tees and i thought of you when i found that out uh, she said she looks forward to my fabric haul and my makes well i've just put that up tonight or i'm hoping to put it up tonight i'm busy uploading it it's taking forever uh, when you told Brian he was a stupid boy, it reminded me of when the captain said that line a lot in Dad's Army. Well, that's where I got it from, Anna. Um, whenever he annoys me, I go, stupid boy. <laughs> He's so used to it. And he calls me something else. I can't remember what he calls me. But I, you know, my, my comment is, oh, stupid boy. <laughs> what does he call me? 
Well, he calls me Dizzy Dussard because I'm always dizzy. And you you getting you often see bits of me being dizzy, but he also calls me something else and I can't remember what it is. Um now then the next one was from Angela ten two two six again. Hi Angela. Uh she said five star hotels generally have a valley and a bellman. Is that not the way it is there? Well, yes it is, Angela. But when you're only going for a weekend and you only have an overnight bag, that you don't ask the bellman to take your bags up to your room. And I don't think they would bother you to do it. And also if you've got a bellman, you've got to tip him. Now Brian's his lordship's mother, her partner was was actually a bell. Well, we we don't call them bellmen; we call them porters. And he was a porter at that hotel, and he used to, he said that he hated having to carry these suitcases up. And the distance that we had to go right to the far end, it must be awful having to carry them all that way. I think they have trolleys as well, though. But no, because. Um, because most people when they're there for just a it, it seemed to me there was a lot of people checking in for a number of reasons a mini weekend a golfing because it's got a golf course attached to it they were there for a golfing weekend and uh probably using the spa facilities because it's got a spa so i know we noticed there was a lot of uh girl ladies having a there was a 40th birthday party going on there was five ladies on the table just to the side of us there was a lot of men golfers came in because they were still wearing their golfing you know kind of they're just golfers dressed in golfing gear you know uh, the the shirts what do you call those shirts the um polo shirts polo shirts and, and trousers to go for for the meal and uh, there was a couple of uh, a couple of parties i think there were well not parties because you couldn't have too many i think you know parties of six at the maximum but there were pe probably people who were only there for the weekend and so they wouldn't bother asking a porter to take the stuff to the room um yes so you don't really use you don't really generally we don't bother to ask anyone to take our luggage up um now then the next one and what did she say after that brian what about some brine cooking included in take five? Yes, I might just get... I read this out to him, Angela, and he said, oh, yeah, I could do some cooking. He does a really good stir fry. So one day I'll get him to... I'll film him doing a stir fry. Uh, when are you going to do the she shed tour? Well, I did say it looks all right here. Bit of a mess along there. Definitely a bit of a mess along here. And a bit of a mess down there round there in there it's not too bad but we've had to bring his laser machine from since we've let close down the our workplace his laser machine is in there and we've had to do a bit of rejigging so hopefully i'm in the process of tidying up it's gradually clearing i mean when we first came i just dumped everything on here and uh, it is gradually clearing because this is my work surface i've got a serger here I've got I've got my camera balanced on top of my sewing machine and I've got another sewing machine in there and there's lots of junk down here I'm not going to let you see <laughs> so once I've tidied it up and I'm getting there slowly but surely the one thing that I'm finding is the older you get things take a lot longer to do I was just saying this to him yesterday I said there was a time where if I said right I'm going like the ironing I'm going to get that ironing done. I would have it done within half an hour. But when I'm doing, everything takes longer as you get older, doesn't it? Or am I the only one? Please tell me. <laughs> Please tell me if you're the same. She says, by the way, Joanne's doesn't have the kind of prices you showed at Boys. A lot of you said that. The, the prices that I showed you at the fabric that I got was very low. I have to say, even I was shocked. They normally sell stuff about £6 a metre uh, six or seven pound a meter and some of it that was almost give away i don't know it made me wonder if they're just trying to get shot of stock to try and make some money because as i said um they were making a few people redundant because of uh covid had cut down business i don't know i mean they are cheap and that particular shop some uh maggie maggie hi maggie I haven't replied to your email yet and i will do but maggie who's doesn't live near me but she says her daughter lives in Yarm which is just the next town across and it's a lovely town and um, 
she was saying that the boat there is a boys over there and i haven't been to that boys for a long time when i went there the first time the boys in darlington didn't have much and the boys in the arm the boys in the arm and boys are spelled b-o-y-e-s boys in the arm had more but now i'm finding that this boys here has an awful lot uh they've got they've got dancing fabric they've got fur fabric they've got um cottons and things not all good quality not, not i mean you know it's quite some of the cottons are stiff cotton it's not the kind of cotton that you if you washed it, it would go soft it, it's kind of very cheap cheap cotton but it's um it's, they have uh, some things that are really you, know, you sometimes see the odd bargain and i have seen i shouldn't say this but i have seen fabric that they sell cheap that other dress shops, other fabric shops are selling for two or three times the price. So yes, boys was I was well impressed well impressed with the prices myself, and I wouldn't normally have bought as much fabric, but when I saw it was almost a giveaway price, I thought I've got to get some. Then the next one was uh Hopper He now this is lovely, I love the name. Hopper He Daho. Hopper He Daho. <laughs> I don't know if that's your name. Hoppy Hidaho and he or she says I love your grey hair was it much trouble growing it out I'm thinking about it as I have very long dark hair and have had grey since my 20s it didn't I was what well, I had been colouring my hair a lot uh, you know uh, I remember going to hairdressers and she said uh, years and years ago and when my when I was starting to get the grey hairs in, she said, "Don't dye the same colour as your normal natural colour. Dye a little bit lighter." And she says, as, "As time goes on, you'll dye lighter." So I kept doing things. Eventually, I started doing things like ash blonde. But I did notice that I had a blonde piece here, uh, not a, a white piece here, and I kept thinking it's really white. And I started letting it grow, and I think. It probably took me, what I did was I made my, I cut, got my hair cut short and by getting it cut short I knew that if it grew out it would grow out, it would grow out quickly. So I think it was last year I, I, I decided to go, I think it was about beginning, beginning of 2019 I thought right I'm going to grow my hair, grow, grow the colour out and so I got my hair cut short and then I think by that time the colour was my roots were that far and gradually it came down and because i'd used a, a lighter a lighter dye the the uh, change in color wasn't too bad um i used to do my hair myself years and years ago and i used to put highlights in so um and every time i used to do the highlights i'd do different colors i'd do uh, a a light blonde one time and a reddy colour the next so each each time I did it it was a different colours and my head was like a mop of all different colours um but that digresses anyway so yes I grew it out and um I would say if you, if you got your hair cut short then it would grow out quicker or you'd notice it less and I think what spurred me on I mean I often mention my son because he's more local than the daughter so he sees me more and he said um when i started growing he said mommy says your hair looks lovely and his wife said the same thing so i thought well if they like my gray hair i'll grow it out but now it's getting really long and as you can see i have got this what i've got in here is not the one that you brush in it's actually called i've told you about it before it's a one that it's a semi-permanent and you wash it you wash your hair then you cream it all over let leave it on for 30 minutes and then you wash your hair again but it's it's made it go purple there and not as much on the backs so yes I, and i remember once i was in the bank paying some money in the bank and i'm one of these people that if i see something nice i've got to say something and i was paying a check-in or something and the lady was stood beside me and she was doing something I, you were kind of a distance away that you couldn't see but I looked across at it and I thought, oh, she has the most beautiful hair. And what it was, was she was almost black haired, but she was going grey. Oh, it, she was black haired and grey strands were coming through all around her head. And they were white grey and it made her hair look beautiful. So I had to go across and say, excuse me, 
can I just say your hair looks lovely have you coloured it like that and she said no she says my grey hair is coming through and I said it actually looks really really nice and I would imagine because she's got black hair she's going to be very she would have been very white quickly but it looked that that in between stage was lovely you could if you've got grey hair coming through you could get them to go to the hairdresser and get them to put grey highlights in so it breaks up the, the the length of it where it's white and then black but uh yeah i'd get it cut and have it have it uh let it grow itself out if you want to my battery's gonna go so i'm gonna swap my battery over vicky h said thanks for taking us on your adventures you matched the music with the hotel beautifully since we are stuck at home it was nice to virtual virtually venture out um yes i do know i'm aware that a lot of you are in places where you're under lockdown uh, some of you are on your own this these are very tough times i liken it now i'm not i'm not from that year and some of you will be i'm not a, a war child but i'm a post-war child uh being born in 1950 after the war and I remember from my mother and father, my mother being in Newcastle, which was uh, a vulnerable place and obviously equivalent to London, well London was worse, you had to wear gas masks, you had to have curfews, you had to have blackouts, you had to, uh, your husbands went off to war, they were, you know, the the men had to go to war and sometimes you never saw them come back, you never had a chance to say goodbye to them properly, you were just told that they died and then um and then the jobs uh obviously there were no jobs the men had all gone so the women had to go and do the men's jobs so it's a bit like that a bit like the second world war the only thing that i'm hoping is the second world war went on for five years hopefully this is only going to go on for next march fingers crossed I'd like to think that if we're going to have a lousy Christmas, it's only going to be one lousy Christmas and not like the war where they had five. So, um, yeah, it's very, it's very reminiscent of my mother and father's tales of the war. Now then, the next one was uh, Ridge Reich, Ridge Reek, Ridge Reich, and she did tell me her name. You did tell me your name and I can't remember what it is sorry that's old age uh hotels in europe feel so much more intimate almost like a b&b &B feels here in the usa it's as if you're a guest in a manner that took me a bit to get used to here in the states they're more there's they are more commercial feeling if that makes sense i like both but they're different experiences what a wonderful gift from your son thoughtful man oh he is my son's very thoughtful aren't you son Aren't you Sunny Boy? I, 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 my mother used to call him Sunny Boy, so I still call him Sunny Boy sometimes. Um, yeah, it's they are. I think I think because it's become the cult for a lot of people to go to these hotels. It's now in England because, especially with not a lot of people do holiday cottages, a lot of people do hotels, and it's kind of the in thing so you go and do a five star hotel here and you go and do a five star star hotel there and you stop for a weekend or a couple of days a couple of nights or whatever and uh yes it's um it's more of a it is it's like a bed and breakfast it's not it's more relaxed it's very much more relaxed i've never yet been to a hotel where it's very where you feel as if you're you're out of place it, you always feel i've always felt relaxed they're re relaxing places and they're quite nice i think we the culture in england is that they like we, we like to go and stop there you feel you feel like yeah, i mean we haven't we're not in the really really top market hotels in london but these are really nice places and a lot of them have a golf course associated with it so if you're a golfer you tend to go there and enjoy that going there the men play golf the women go to the spa um now then what else did someone say susan woods hi susan your neck curtain is beautiful where was it from well the neck curtain is dark now so i can't show you it but my neck curtain is was bought on ebay and it was um 
I bought that on eBay a long time ago and it was 99 pence and it came all the way from China. Now 99 pence is probably what a dollar, two dollars, less just over a dollar and it came all the way from China. Oh I can show you, hang on a second. I believe this is the one you're referring to, Susan, and it's a see-through one with embroidery on it and um, I it was I think it's actually and it's advertised embroidered lace fabric but it's um when I read it again they called it a bridal veil and it came from China now this one has been cut into two because I have it through there there are two doors that open onto the garden and I wanted some the same curtain to go on that's it was a cat hair I wanted the same kind of curtain to go on there so I, this one on this window was bought several years ago for 99 pence these ones were this one I bought two lengths they were sold in lengths I think I think they were meter lengths possibly no maybe it's longer a longer length but um this is half the width because the doors are quite narrow and I didn't want to get too much fabric so this is one length cut in cut down and I've just overlocked the edge and I overlocked it with rainbow overlocking thread I don't know if you can see that rainbow overlocking it's not perfect and this bit here because it wasn't long enough for the window this is just some fabric that I bought from boys years and years ago and the same thing I just overlocked the back edge here uh, with the rainbow thread nothing fantastic but i figured it would look quite nice just hanging in front of the in front of the door so that is and on the bottom i've had to put a little bit of this on the bottom as well just to extend the length so it doesn't look stupid so yeah those are um curtains that i have on the back one so i i see if i can find a link down and i'll put it down below um for where i found it on ebay but both of them were bought on ebay this one was bought during lockdown and the other one was bought several years ago so it must still be available paradise creations hi paradise i don't know what your name is but hi paradise creations um i like to use pinterest to get free patterns and i also put in pattern or idea on the search bar some things i look to see if there may be a tutorial for what i'm looking for I love your channel I've been subscribed for a while I live in the USA some things you describe is like what does it mean and I look it up on Google to see the American version like you were talking about the ironing board you made and you said it was on a it could be on a settee and she didn't need to she didn't know what a settee was um, yes I'll never forget I had a friend uh, uh, she used to, I used to teach her and she went off to America for she did the American camp summer camps and she she's never married but she's always she loved going to do the American camps. she's a teacher as well and she um, every year she'd go to the summer camp and she, she used to come back with all sorts of, of absolute hilarious tales and one of the things she told us when she first came back was that she was they were doing some kind of art or something drawing or something in the classroom in, in a classroom and um, she said has anybody got a rubber and they all said what what and she's a rubber and they said what do you want a rubber for and she said, well to rub things out and I'm drawing and they said oh you mean eraser <laughs> We call it rubber, you call it eraser. You have a completely different name for rubber or a different meaning for rubber. The same thing, uh, she also said that uh, we call it bottom or bum and you call it fanny. Now fanny for us is the female part at the front. <laughs> and, then, and then other people were saying to me, what does natter mean? Well, natter is basically chat. Uh, or let's have a little chat or let's have a little natter about this let me have a little natter with you about what the problem is or I'll have a little natter with you later meaning I'll have a little chat with you later and I, I don't think it's as much a colloquialism it's just that people say that I'll have a natter as I said to one lady you wouldn't hear the Queen saying that 
one would have a chat with one or a conversation but we would say let's have a little natter with you um so yes and and we have settee sofa oh i remember one time when i was teaching i said something to the kids i used to get on great with the kids and i said oh i remember i was saying i was listening to the wireless this morning and they went the what and i said the wireless and they said what's one of them i said well what you listen to the rock to radio one and music on miss a wireless what's a wireless and i said well what radio one comes out of it and they said you mean a radio and i said well it's always been a wireless to me <laughs> but these days wireless is something completely different anyway um but it used to have me laughing it used to this is what well, is a quick aside uh when i was teaching one day where i taught the kids were very broad and uh, they used to speak broad geordie and geordie is like northumbrian uh, uh, broad northumbrian i should say and uh this girl got up and she said miss i forget me aim walk and i said you've what and she said, I forget my aim walk. And I said, would you like to spell that? And because I knew what she meant. She said, I've forgotten my homework, but aim walk, they call it. So I said, would you like to spell that? And she said, well, miss, it means it's homework. And I said, homework. So I then went to the blackboard and I put H O. No, first of all, I did yem walk. So I put Y E M. W A R K. No, miss, it's, it's homework. So I put what? Homework. So I put H O E M W A R K. She says, No, miss, homework. <laughs> and I said, Right, you spell it. So she spelled it H O M E W O R K. So I said to the class, I said, Right, kids, what does that say? And they all went, homework. And I said, and what does that say? Homework. And what does that say? Yem walk. And I says, what did you say? She says, I said, I forget me yem walk. <laughs> they, they used to make me laugh a lot. Anyway, so that was the last comment that I got. And I've enjoyed chatting to you. I hope I haven't bored the pants off you. Um, is there anything else I want to tell you about? Um not really i've got a lot more to tell you but it'll be coming next time and the time after and the time after that so you will hopefully get to see all about our travels to norfolk and um i hope you enjoy watching that when the time comes so till then catch you next time <laughs>